Hi, hello, and welcome. If you are a young woman thinking of jumping on a ketogenic diet for your health, you've come to the right place. In this content, I'll be dissecting a study that aims to offer some insight on outcomes like weight, blood pressure, blood cholesterol, blood fats, blood sugar, and others. So if that's what you're here for, let's begin. Learn your body, a science-based education. If you've been with Physionic for a while, you know that the study, my detailed notes, and additional amendments are all attached to this content for you. However, I should also mention that this is one study, and while informative, it is only one of a series of studies I will and have covered on different health outcomes. So if you'd like a more extensive, scientifically rigorous education on a particular health outcome of interest, be sure to check out the series you are interested in. Also, that is linked for you as well. Okay, enough. How did the researchers probe this question in front of us now? How does the ketogenic diet affect young women in a variety of health metrics? Well, the researchers recruited 39 people, of which a vast majority were women. Less than 20% of the people were men, so the study will be more indicative of women. They split the participants into two groups. The first was placed on a ketogenic diet, consisting of 3% carbohydrates and about 70% fat. The other group was instructed to maintain their diet, which was higher in carbohydrates and not ketogenic. We'll call this the control group. The researchers took baseline measures before either group was instructed on their diet, and after three weeks on their respective diets, the researchers took measurements again, especially blood measurements. Now, allow me to clarify something. The researchers made comparisons between the diets, that means the ketogenic diet versus the control diet, as well as a second comparison within each group, meaning at baseline versus three weeks later on each diet. We'll discuss the latter only because the participants in each group were uneven. That means the ketogenic diet had almost all women, 93% of participants in that group were women, and the control group only had 73% of the group being women. This could skew the results heavily. So we'll look at a comparison of these women before being on the ketogenic diet and then again after being on the ketogenic diet for three weeks only. If you would like to see the detailed comparison between the groups, please refer to the attached notes. A final note on the diet, it comprised of almost equal saturated and unsaturated fat, but the participants were not instructed to be in an energy deficit. Okay, study design and technicalities largely out of the way. Let's begin with body weight loss and blood pressure. These women, when using their ketogenic diet, experienced a mild weight loss, a little over a kilogram. Not much at all, but something. However, it seems likely that most of that weight loss was water-based, not fat-based. The ketogenic diet, after three weeks, also did not seem to have much of an effect on blood pressure measures. Both systolic and diastolic blood pressure did not change. So this means the ketogenic diet leads to mild weight loss, but does not affect blood pressure. How about cholesterol and blood fats, though? Well, blood cholesterol levels were significantly increased, measured by all types, LDL, HDL, and total, including everything non-HDL. Looking a little deeper, the type of cholesterol particle also changed, with increases in APOA and APOB cholesterol particles. If you're unfamiliar with these various types and the research, I will link sources for you to learn. But this means that this ketogenic diet increased cholesterol across the board. Interestingly, this effect is not seen with blood fats or triglycerides, as there's absolutely no change. Finally, the last point I want to highlight is blood sugar or blood glucose levels. Again, here, just as with blood fats, there is no change. I also want to acknowledge that there are other measures, but I want to focus on these few in particular. Now, before we get into our conclusions, let's discuss a bit of the potential physiology to explain these results outlined by the researchers. The researchers point out that the diet was quite high in saturated fat, even if it was also equally high in unsaturated fat. They mentioned that saturated fat tends to reduce the number of cholesterol receptors on the surface of liver cells. 
As such, with decreased cholesterol receptors, this means the liver is less able to sense blood cholesterol levels and modulate its own production of cholesterol. Since blood cholesterol binds the liver cholesterol receptors, and the more that binds, the less the liver produces of cholesterol to pump into the bloodstream. This was somewhat substantiated by reduced, although non-significantly, expression of a cholesterol receptor gene, according to the researchers. This means that the composition of the ketogenic diet by high saturated fats may be a culprit for some of these outcomes, increased cholesterol. However, the remaining effects might be explained by the study not being quite long enough to see any effect on blood pressure and blood sugar, for example. Or alternatively, there might simply be no effect, or well, maybe some other explanation. In conclusion, this means that if you are a young, healthy woman and you jump on a ketogenic diet high in saturated fat, you may experience slight reductions in body weight, yet no differences in blood pressure, blood fats, and blood sugar. However, significant increases in blood cholesterol. However, the researchers also mentioned there was significant variability, so some may experience changes and some may not, but on average, you can expect these experiences. If you'd like a deeper dive, I'd encourage you to check out the series wherein I cover many studies in series on set outcomes of interest, like blood pressure, blood sugar, etc. Or, if it's available already, skip the details and select my content summarizing all of the studies in one place on my final verdict. I hope to speak with you then, and thanks for stopping by. See ya.